All right, everyone, we are back. We got another Basic Bogies episode. Currently, Gary's on his way back out of town. So instead, we brought in a second TJ to join me today. We have TJ Baker joining us out of Buffalo, New York. Welcome, TJ. Thanks, TJ. I appreciate it. It's always great uh, meeting and getting to chat with another TJ. It doesn't happen too often, so it's, uh, <laughs> it's great. Yeah. So thanks for having me on. Yeah, of course. Do people always flip your initials? I get so many people that call me JT all the time. I don't know why. I feel like TJ is more common than JT, but I get it a bunch. Yeah, you'd be surprised. It's uh, I always like it. it's two letters. How do you mess it up? You know, but uh, yeah, every <laughs> once in a while you get the JT or um, the classic. Also, is like the spelling. I use I I use like periods in my name when I when I spell it that way. Um, and usually you'll get like only the one period, you'll get like T dot J or something like that. It was always a pet peeve of mine <laughs> growing up. It just always seemed a little out of place. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, you're a long drive competitor. How long you've been doing long drive, I guess. <laughs> I try to, I try my best to, um, honestly, uh, <laughs> it's this past season was probably my first like fall season, uh, on the world long drive tour. Okay. Um, I had competed last year or the year prior. I had competed in a couple of events and I went to the world championships for the first time. And then back in 2019, I had done it for a few months. Honestly, I kind of just dabbled in it. I did a Canadian event and then uh, that's when I sort of moved to Buffalo and started my life here. And uh, so, yes, yeah, so I'd probably say this was my first full season uh, on the World Long Drive Tour. Cool. So, when did you start playing golf then? Did you start at a young age? Yeah, like uh, like a lot of kids, my first job was sort of at the local muni course, right? Uh, you know, cleaning mm-hmm. carts and doing all that sort of stuff. Um, the funny part about that was we didn't get paid. Instead, we got paid in free golf. Um, and so we very cool. much took advantage <laughs> of that. So it was like, yeah. you know, you get your four, six hour shift in whatever it was and go play 18 holes, maybe 36. I think, you know, one day I played 54 holes, I think, even at one point. So it was, uh, you nice. definitely took advantage of it. But yeah, right from a young age... Um, my parents had a club in my hand and uh, and fell in love with the game at a, at a pretty young age for sure. Cool. So did you play like in high school or any college golf kind of your way up through? No, actually, I'm a, I'm a baseball guy, actually. So uh, so I played a bunch of different sports growing up and uh, and always had loved golf. But I think uh, actually I think I liked golf a little bit better, to be honest. I always say it's much easier <laughs> to practice golf on your own. Uh, you don't need somebody yeah. to uh, to throw you batting practice or someone to play catch with. And you can only hit it off a tee or throw it against a wall so many times before it it uh, it sort of grows a little stale. But um, but no, baseball was was my thing, and so always had played golf, um, but never never competitively or anything like that. Um, and then uh, so I, I played baseball in college, and then. Finally, when baseball ended, I decided to, not that I played golf competitively, but I was like, hey, you know, I'll kind of dive into my golf game. I've never been able to like fully commit to it just to see what would happen. And so, you know, played in a couple like local like club championships here in Buffalo, that kind of thing. So that was my first real exposure to competitive golf, which is a completely different ball game. I very quickly realized, but, um, <laughs> but yeah, so, you know, always had played golf, always really enjoyed it, but, uh, but was predominantly sort of a, a baseball guy growing up. Yeah. And so obviously being a baseball player, that's what kind of, that's that what just led to being a long driver. Like you obviously just probably bomb it off the tee and. Yeah. I'd always hit it, uh, always hit it really long. I'm, I'm also, I'm a little bit bigger. I'm about six, seven. So it was always like really tall growing up. And so, you know, mm-hmm. whenever I'd go to, uh, go to like the local golf shop or whatever to, to test out the new clubs on, on the simulators and stuff, would always have people being like, wow, you hit it really long. You should give long drive a go, but nobody really knows how do you just like get into long drive, right? It's, it's kind of like that interesting yeah. sport where you don't just like dive in sort of thing. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I'd always hit it really long and, um, I think it definitely translates, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the professional long drivers are like former baseball guys. Um, uh, to be honest, not yeah. too many of them are actually golfers. Um, I find it interesting, but I think there's gotta be something with when, you know, if you were a golfer or have a golf background, you get very transfixed on accuracy and ball flight. Right. And so, um, in long drive, we hit a lot of squiggly ones. There's a lot of, a lot of really bad flights <laughs> sometimes. And I feel like the golfers of the group that can kind of drive them, uh, a little crazy, but, uh, but yeah, no baseball translates really well. Any sort of rotational sport. Um, I know one of the guys was a former like javelin, uh, thrower in, uh, in college and stuff. So, uh, you, you'd be surprised with the, the variety of different backgrounds. And that's probably why you see <laughs> a, a, a variety of different swings and stuff but yeah uh, baseball definitely helped it definitely helped me for sure cool so how when did you start to like do your first long drive competition then 
Cubs. Yeah, so it was, um, you know, baseball ended for me back in 2019. I was um, I was going to St. Bonaventure here, just south of Buffalo, down in Olean. Oh, and cool, uh, I was yeah. doing my MBA. And uh, yeah, go Bonnies uh, to any of the Bonnies out there listening. But, uh, <laughs> you know, decided to give the long drive thing a go. I had found somebody up in Canada, and there was like a local Canadian championship going on. So I had somebody like a week before the event build me up uh, a, my first long driver kind of thing and went out there and had no idea what was going on. Uh, but just went out. And competed, and then we ended up going to Mexico and did like a little team event kind of thing, but it wasn't like a very super competitive event. But at that point, I was, you know, sort of a broke, uh, a broke college student, and, and long drive is definitely a little <laughs> bit of an expensive sport to get into. There's definitely a little bit of a barrier to entry. Um, and uh, it was also starting to ruin my golf game a little bit. And uh, yeah, at that time, I was taking a lot of pride in my golf game. So decided to shelf it and put it uh, put it away and, and move to Buffalo and start my career in accounting and all that sort of good stuff. And then, uh, quite honestly, it was last year. Um, so the World Long Drive Tour had come back. Um, GNF Sports Entertainment had purchased the trademark and had brought it back with a full YouTube production. And I'd always kind of followed along with it just because I knew some of the guys from back when I sort of dabbled with it a little bit and uh, was yeah. always interested in the sport. Something about it just always like sort of clicked with me. And, um, so, uh, my roommate and I here in Buffalo decided to go to just like a local track man lounge one night, I think in like March or something. I didn't have my golf clubs with me. They're with my parents. Um, so I just had my old long driver. I was like, you know what? I'll bring this thing out there. You know, I'll use your irons. We'll just sort of see what happens. And, uh, so it was just kind of, you know, swinging away with my old long drive club. And, uh, all of a sudden mm-hmm. I saw my speeds were half decent. I mean, I was hovering around 140, 142 club speed and, I hadn't really done any training for like three or four years in terms of swing speed. So with like world long drive coming back and seeing all the social media stuff and seeing where I was kind of at, I was like, you know what? I'll maybe give this a shot. Maybe I can like qualify for worlds or, you know, sort of see what happens. So, uh, went out and ended up qualifying for worlds at one of the Canadian, uh, world long drive stops. Um, and then went down to the world championships actually had, I had pretty decent success for my first world championships. It was definitely a, a little overwhelming at, at times. I think there was 128 guys or something like that. And it was just a, sort of a, a bit of a grind every single day. You're in a group of, of 16 yeah, guys. Okay. And you just keep sort of trying to advance and advance. And uh, so I think I ended up making the top 32 and was came up a couple of yards short of, uh, of making the top 16, actually. But uh, in the process, set like a, a PR, which is still a PR of 431 yards. Uh, and that was down in Atlanta. Wow. <laughs> and uh, from there, I was just kind of hooked. I think um, for me, I was always searching for um, something to fill that competitive uh, athlete void that I had kind of had since baseball had sort of ended. I'd been so used to having you know something to train for, something to get competitive yeah, exactly. with. Um, and long drive kind of filled that gap for me. And then uh, this past season, I was like, you know what? If, uh, if I want to get my world ranking up and see what I can make of this, you know, we, we got to go to all the events. And so this year, I just like fully committed to it actually like trained this past off season and prepared for the season and uh and then went out and, and obviously had a little bit of success with it this year but uh but now i'm in the full swing of it and and absolutely love it for sure cool yeah what's like your just regular practice routine then now that you're like i guess just in well it's, is it still kind of like is it off season now does it kind of line up like that but i guess when you're like mid-season what is like your just daily weekly practice routines yeah, yeah. So it definitely changes. And that was one thing that like last year when I was kind of getting into it, I had no idea. I hadn't, you know, done any like training um for anything. You know, I was still going to the gym quite frequently, right? But uh, it was more for uh it was more for just like bodybuilding workouts and stuff, just try to be healthy yeah. and, and that sort of thing. It wasn't any like sports specific stuff. And so uh this past season, um I started working with uh, a coach who's also a competitive long driver up in Canada, his name's Ryan Gregnall. Um and uh started working with him and he kinda got me on board and, and started programming specific workouts and all that sort of stuff. And and not mm-hmm. just in the gym stuff, but also, you know, trying to actually put together uh, a plan for training, right? Because that was another thing I wasn't used to of, you know, being a baseball guy, you know, we play so many games that you're just you're kind of you know you kind of just ride a certain level throughout the season but with these events because they pop up once a month once every three weeks you're trying to build up and peak um similar to like a swimming sport or something where you're trying Mm. to taper and gotcha and all that sort of stuff which was brand new to me um but yeah so in the season uh a lot of the volume and stuff kind of comes down especially in the gym um you're what you're really trying to do is like mobility and recovery for the most part you're trying to make sure that you're fresh Mm -hmm. for your actual like hitting sessions 
um, versus I would say like now that the off season is kind of here, um, we'll probably dial back the hitting sessions, maybe like once a week, uh, maybe about a hundred balls, that kind of thing, but really starting to go like heavy in the gym, start to build up those strengths and stuff. And then mm-hmm. slowly as you start to get closer to the spring, it starts to transition from building up that strength to, uh, doing more like power type exercises, whether it's, you know, med ball stuff or jumping, um, gotcha. anything yeah. to that nature where you're taking that strength you built and, figuring out a way to efficiently generate the power. And then you'll also start mm-hmm. to ramp up sort of the ball count and, and all that sort of good stuff. But cool. Yeah. So like, I guess mid season, how are you hitting balls every day? And is it usually like, you have kind of put a number on it, like pitches would be like just trying to limit it a bit. Yeah, definitely, uh, definitely trying to, to put a number on it. I wish I could hit every day. Unfortunately, uh, my job's a, a, a little uh, a little grueling, so I didn't exactly have all the time to practice as much as I wanted to. But um, but no, I think in the season we were shooting for two or three sessions a week. I think um, and trying to be about a hundred and. 10, 120 balls essentially is, is kind of the, that sort of sweet spot. Um, and that's like 120, like full out driver swings essentially. And try, yeah, I would say gotcha. like more like 90%. Um, you're not, you know, you're trying to still hit it relatively straight because believe it or not, we still have to hit it straight. It's not just all about speed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, but you also want to build that conditioning, right? Cause as I mentioned, um, for some of the events, they're, they're multiple day events and you get to the world championship, you're looking at like three or four days. Um, so you got to be able to sort of have that, uh, have that stamina and that conditioning because if you're if you're only hitting 40 or 60 balls in a session you might be great that first day out but then uh but then when you have to try and turn around and do the same thing the next morning um and then maybe turn around that same afternoon and hit again it uh it starts to be really grueling on the on the nervous system and um and the muscles and that sort of stuff so yeah it's it's definitely uh like a conditioning exercise but again not trying to go you know too all out that you just completely deplete yourself it's it's a, it's really interesting it's brand new to me but trying to do the timing and the conditioning and stuff um that's why uh i i leave it up to the professionals to, to help me with that stuff Thanks for watching today's episode. To see more of our content, be sure to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and subscribe on YouTube. We can be found at Basic Bogies on all platforms. Thanks. We hope to see you on the next one.